I'm over six, maybe 75 and a half. And so it's going to work out all right. Right. Bye. Hello, Dr. How are you today? My name is Judson Randolph. I'm a surgeon. Well, I'm very pleased with this little boy's progress because, as you know... I've been fortunate that answer. for 30 years I've been operating on children. Yes! He's my man! I've seen a lot of children get well in those years. And, of course, I've seen some children who didn't get well, who died. And any time we can save a child's life, it's precious. It's more precious. I feel like that child is going to do something special in life. Great. Thank you. All right. I'll Thanks, see you later. Liza. Good. It's good that we're at this point. Uh, yeah. It's a real high to go to a parent and say, your child is going to be all right. He's going to live. He's gotten through a difficult operation. And um, it's, it's wonderful to have a hand in that sort of thing. I certainly can think of children that have been saved in my operating room from techniques that have been worked out in the animal laboratory that could not have been saved otherwise. Hi, Laura. Computers can do many things, but they cannot substitute for life. They cannot substitute for a living system. And that's what we're dealing with here. And that's why we need to continue animal research. When I'm asked to equate an animal's life with a child's life, I've got to come down on the side of the child. Emily Doby was born with a diaphragmatic hernia. The diaphragm is that large flat muscle that separates the chest from the abdomen. And in, many babies are born with an opening there which allows their intestine to slide up into the chest and compromise the development of the lung and when they're born, the function of the lung. The minute Emily was born, she turned blue. We had no indication that she was sick at all during the whole pregnancy, it went fine. And um, then she, when she came out, it was within like a few minutes that we found out that she had problems. We didn't know they were that severe at first. She underwent a repair of her diaphragm. The intestine was placed down uh, where it should be, below the diaphragm. The lung was allowed to expand as it would, but it clearly was insufficient to sustain life. And we made the decision to put her on ECMO. Are you getting ready for the ECMO? Yeah. ECMO means extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. The pump oxygenator is a very large, complicated machine which extracts blood as it enters the heart. Okay, you want arterial first. Runs it through a set of uh, instruments that purify that blood or oxygenate it. I'm trying to get the air bubbles out of the system so that it doesn't circulate. And bring it back to the body. I need a large syringe of pepperonized saline, please. We've had the pump oxygenator for heart surgery for more than 30 years. But to keep a baby on a machine which oxygenates its blood without destroying the blood and without beating up the cells required a lot of experimentation. It's ready to go home. Huh. Uh, the animal work with ECMO was mainly sheep. Uh, the sheep heart is very uh, much akin to the human heart, and uh, that has been a very useful animal model to develop the membrane oxygenator for long runs. We can get this baby oxygenated. And when Emily came off, her lung was functioning. It was just like the sun had come out, and she was alive. And she would have been dead if we hadn't put her on ECMO. She shouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. She wouldn't be alive. Yeah. It's hard to realize when you see her because she seems like such a normal, healthy child, which she is, but to realize that she wouldn't even be here. She wouldn't be alive as, you know. Look, Kristen, Rick's on there. This is a story that's She's very outgoing. She's a colorful little girl. She likes to play with other children. She has lots of fun. I don't think 
I even realize how lucky I am. Can not read us another one? You okay. want to do Maryland? Maryland. All okay. right. I think it's uh, this one right here. She loves to learn. She loves to be involved with United States of America. That's reading good. books, what learning how to spell, it? learning how to count. Well, we take some action and we threw it back in the bag. Then what happened? I see. What did Miss Helfer say? She's a very bright little girl. I'm looking forward to being with her for the rest of her life. I think that thanks to ECMO, she'll have as many years as any child born perfectly healthy. You want grapes? You like grapes. And, and cherries. Orange, cherry. Get a cherry. Oh, if someone had told me that it would be necessary to do away with animal research, I would say in the nicest way I could say it, that without such research, not only would my child not be here, but countless hundreds of children would not survive uh, birth. So Oliver, you're gonna have hot cakes. Elizabeth, you're gonna have hot cakes. Jasmine, you want hot cakes and sausage? Our family, we have three living children. Our oldest is Elizabeth. She'll be 10 in a few weeks. She's in fourth grade. Next comes Oliver. He's seven. And then Jasmine, who's almost five. No, I gave you that one. In addition to them, we have Wayne, who's our foster son. He's 19. He's been with us for over three years. Did you guys want to go to the park after this? Yes. Down by the lake? And then Lincoln, who died last summer. He was 20 months old. He's our youngest. Lincoln Crane was a beautiful little boy, tow-headed blonde, blue eyes, and he received a terrible burn over 60% of his body surfaces. We were working with that and felt that his burn was getting better. But from the burned tissue, he received some infection in his bloodstream, which became more difficult to control. And this finally settled in his lungs and he had a very serious lung problem. And this led, sadly, to his death. And if we'd had the right kind of an oxygenator, the right size pumps, the right kind of tubing, if we'd had that for Lincoln, he'd be alive today. I need the 3CC. We need that kind of know-how for a two-year-old. We need it for a four-year-old. We need it for a 10-year-old. And that work must go on in the animal laboratory. It breaks my heart to think that next year or the next, we could save Lincoln Crane and we could save other children I've seen die like that. I think that if, if someone is a parent, all they do is have to put themselves in a situation hypothetically and try to imagine what they would be feeling like if their child was on the brink of death. And if you're in that situation, you look for anything that will pull your child through and enable him to survive. You know, we've, we've had pets. And I was raised on a farm where there were plenty of uh, animals, and we were taught to you know, take care of the animals and the importance of being kind to them. But their lives were never placed above ours are on equal level with ours. Our parents recognized that we were their children. We weren't livestock. And there's a, there's a difference. <laughs> Lincoln was our son. He was part of, of Kate and I. And there is no way that we would ever feel the bond or the uh, strength that we got from our son. I and mean, it's just not the same with, with an animal. I don't think you'd watch a, a cat pull themselves up in the crib for the first time and just clap for joy over their accomplishments. There's just no way. You can compare an animal with a child. is a five-year-old boy with leukemia. Uh, I think leukemia, more than most diseases, strikes terror in the hearts 
of mothers and daddies. And progress in leukemia over the past decade has been electrifying. Children are living today that never would have lived a decade ago. Very good. Um, I met Andrew. He was a, actually a very sick little boy uh, when, when we first met him. Uh, and his parents were very anxious and, and very frightened. The initial thought that we had was that this probably represented acute leukemia. Um, and the test that we did at that time confirmed, uh, unfortunately, that suspicion. What sound does being make? B. Right, B. Mike in. Can you give me some bean words? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Anything and else? And V for some volcano. Volcano, right. What are you going to do in Disney World? It's not an easy thing to do to, uh, to talk to parents and to inform parents that their child has a potentially fatal uh, or even life-threatening uh, illness. Are we going to take that trip in the body? What is that called? Body wars. Body wars. I don't think I was that surprised when they told me that he had leukemia. I knew it was cancer. I didn't know that it was leukemia. Um, certainly the diagnosis came with... with I mean, you, 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 don't, you don't want to accept it. You know, it's like, no, it's not my child. OK, that's the universe of energy. And that's where the dinosaurs are, huh? I have a problem with not letting him see if I'm anxious or if I'm upset. He's very sensitive. Where do you want to go? I want to go to see this thing. What is that? Evenings can be very, very difficult, because once the child is in bed, you kind of let down your guard. And that's when the tears come, and that's when when the fears come, and sometimes there are nights when fear just is it just grips me. I'm gonna get on an airplane with mommy and daddy. Yeah. It has been a long ordeal for young Andrew with dramatic ups and downs. <laughs> but the important thing for the Moore family is that continued animal research has given them hope. Okay. Fortunately, in Andrew's case, uh, he achieved uh, a remission uh, with intensive chemotherapy, uh, which he tolerated very well. But his disease came back or recurred. Uh, he experienced a bone marrow relapse, and it became very clear uh, that we had to do something else uh, in Andrew's case. Is it just back to a little bit normal? Isn't where back it to normal. normal. Okay. I think. Uh, that option was limited to bone marrow transplantation, um, and involved the uh, the expertise of my colleagues. Ralph Quinones. Hi, how are you doing? We have learned how to take bone marrow from a normal source and give it to such children. How's your appetite? Fine. You still eating lots? Yeah. Yeah. And that has now become the accepted norm for treating otherwise resistant leukemia is to do a bone marrow transplant. Is that cold? I'm sorry. <laughs> tickle. It does tickle, doesn't it? And those initial studies were done both in the test tube, and more importantly, they were done to prove the transplantation could work, that you could take bone marrow from one organism to another, were done in animals, first in laboratory mice, and then in larger animals, such as monkeys and dogs and pigs. And this becomes very important for all types of transplantation, bone marrow transplant, kidney transplant, and heart transplant. Becomes very important in another area where the immune system is very important in the study of AIDS. Andrew, I can't get your weight when you're holding on to the counter. Are you trying to get it? He's alive today because of the research that was done on animals. And I feel very deeply for the animals. I mean, I hate to see an animal suffer, but I hate to see my son suffer too. This is my child. Some people have actually questioned whether medical progress has occurred under the form of research and animal experimentation. There we go. Now, I can tell you unequivocally, we are now living 20 years more than we did at the beginning of this century. Is he OK? Oh, yeah. Many other diseases that used to be a scourge in this nation uh, are eliminated and are eliminated around the world. Smallpox, completely eliminated, one of the great killers, all done with animal research. Good. And the Emiran staying down fine? Much progress uh, has been made in childhood cancer, for example. But we still have cancer out there as a specter. 
we have AIDS, these great problems of health in our nation today have got to have animal experimentation for finding the final cure. Because of animal research, there's hope for Andrew Moore instead of a death sentence from leukemia. Because of animal research, Emily Dobish and tens of thousands, maybe millions, of little ones just like her have a chance for life. Think about Lincoln Crane. If animal research had progressed just a little faster, he would have had the chance to laugh and cry and grow just like any other child. We're going to try to hook the baby up to this machine now. And when people get in the way of that progress, I can't forgive them. I really cannot forgive them.